All right, this is another week of indoor football, and we have a lot of champions, you know, being crowned. We'll start with the lower leagues first before we get to the top leagues, you know. Um, in the United Arena League, we have the Georgia Lena, um, Georgia Lena Lions. They have won the UAL Championship, and also in Elite Indoor Football, even though EIF is a, even more of a joke than the UAL. The Reading Raptors have indeed beaten the Southern Steam, you know, beat them bad, 58-6. I don't know what the score of the Georgia Lena Peach State game was, but there was a whole fiasco with the UAL having to cancel, you know, the remainder of their season, and thus, you know, it was only a three-team league anyway, so, you know, there was going to be a championship game regardless. Um... But yeah, congratulations to both of those teams for winning their respective championships. Now let's move on um, up to the CIF. Let us move on up to the CIF. Saturday night, CIF Champions Bowl number six, the Salina Liberty. Heavy favorites. I picked them to win the CIF Championship at home against the Omaha Beef. The only team that beat them during the regular season. Their quarterback was injured in that game. Salinas quarterback Adams was injured in that game. But now he returned, and it seemed like for a little while, despite the fact that there was audio issues, you know, just audio issues, as is typical with the CIF, you know, audio issues, the game was indeed over three hours. So, you know, typical CIF quality right there. You know, having a three-hour indoor game, which should not be happening at all. You know, maybe about two hours, 45 minutes is a good sweet spot, you know, for the indoor game. Um, but, yeah, Salina blew it. They blew it. The Liberty blew it. And the Omaha Beef, very surprisingly, have won their first ever championship. First ever championship in over 20 years of existence. Crazy stuff. Crazy how the indoor world can be. Congrats to the beef. And now the CIF will focus on what they need to be focusing on next year. They need, they need to fix some things. I think they really need to fix some things because there have been some issues. Their move to YouTube was mostly alright. Um, but still the same issues remained. I think, you know, audio issues were still there. And I hope, you know, somebody from the CIF, you know, somebody big up at the CIF is watching this and saying, hey, take down these notes, you know. Uh, I'm no expert in everything on sound design and stuff like that. Because, hell, I have, pro I have problems with sound every day. You know, that's why my videos are not the greatest quality. But, in any case, CIF needs to fix some things, you know, especially audio issues, visual issues as well. You know, you can't have a scoreboard that looks very outdated. We're talking, you know, you got scoreboard graphics that look very outdated. Some of these same, some of these same scoreboard graphics from five years ago, you know, still being used. So that needs to be fixed. Um, as far as you know, other things going on in CIF. Um, Expansion. What is left? Who is left for the CIF to get? We don't know what the status of the Colorado Stampede are. We don't know if they're coming to the CIF. We don't know if they're coming to the IFL. We don't know what their deal is right now. So we'll X them off, you know. And, you know, for those other two teams that are supposed to come back, that are playing their own, you know, Lone Star Series right now, um, yeah. Yeah, it, it was just about as expected, you know, taking on a bunch of travel teams. Obviously, you should take care of those travel teams. So, for Amarillo and West Texas, they'll be meeting up in Odessa on, I don't know when, I think it'll be next Saturday night, that they'll be meeting up in Odessa for the Lone Star Series Championship, or whatever they're calling it. Um, so, there's that. So, I believe those two teams will return along with the Oklahoma Flying Aces. They will also return to the CIF, you know, hopefully they get that workers comp situation, you know, sorted out, but if they don't get that sorted out and they completely fold, it's all right, you know, I think the CIF could have, you know, maybe a 10 to 12 team alignment anywhere from 10 to 12 teams next year, at there has to be at least 10, there, there has to be at least 10, because there is 10 listed right now. 
you know, six active, two playing an independent schedule, you know, one not active because of workers' comp, and the other is an expansion out up in Montana. So there was that. Um, let's move on to the NAL because the NAL. It's been interesting this year, I'll tell you that much. Um, there's really only been two teams that have really caught my eye, and that is the Columbus Lions and the Albany Empire. Empire, of course, you know, having the best record in the league, and they got a, they kind of got a fluky loss against Jacksonville that was very fluky, I'm not going to lie to y'all. And then Columbus came up, said, we're going to beat the mess out of Jacksonville. We're going to beat them up so bad. And this is like the, and this is honestly, I was very surprised that Jacksonville got beat up that bad. I knew their defense was not the greatest, but, you know, I thought Southwick could maybe, you know, salvage that defense a little bit, you know, with with the offensive play and everything like that. But, no, Jacksonville got manhandled. They got beaten up. They got destroyed. And Columbus won their game. Albany, Albany won their game against the Jersey Flight. And the Orlando Predators beat the Carolina Copers in a, in a pretty good game, honestly, that Carolina Orlando game. And guess who the top three teams are? Guess who has locked up playoff spots? Albany, Orlando, and Columbus. Three spots filled up, and there are two weeks left to go in the season. So who's going to get that last spot? Will it be the Jersey Flights? Will it be the Jacksonville Sharks? Or will it be the Carolina Cobras? Carolina may be kind of out in the dust right now, but, you know, you never know. I'm not sure how the standings are working out right now, but I do know this. Whoever's going to get that last spot is just not going to have a good time. So, I mean, these other, at, le at least Jersey can put up a fight, and Carolina can put up a fight sometimes too, but Jacksonville has looked not the greatest this year. It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of going to be interesting to see, you know, the Jacksonville Sharks probably not even coming close to winning the NAL championship. I don't think they'll. I don't think that the um, that the Sharks will get anywhere close to an NAL championship this year. I think, you know, I don't remember if I said anything about predictions and stuff like that. But I think, you know, right now where we are at, I think a Albany Columbus title game. And speaking of Albany Columbus, that is a big matchup next weekend. So that's gonna be fun. All right, let's move on up to the IFL. Let's move on up, and we got some surprises some big big surprises this weekend um, let's just talk about two of them first off my first go fighters lost to Bismarck Bucks yeah I don't I don't know how either I don't know how you know I mean Bismarck is one of those teams that has just been really really good you know at times you know they they can put real big fight you know and they did what they needed to do against the fighters at home and I mean they they, they just they just they just they just wanted it more. They wanted it more. You know, those L, you know, decided to do something stupid with at the end of the game and everything like that. The whole I'm gonna try and get a deuce, maybe, but then don't kick a deuce. Look like we're going for an onside kick, but don't get the onside kick, so we just do a regular kick and it goes off, you know, I think it went off the um the the um scoreboard and stuff like that, so I was just like, I'm done. I'm done for the day. I'm done for the night. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm tired. And that was that, you know, for that game. But, you know, Frisco's still in it. You know, a lot of people are saying, hey, Frisco can still make a run at the United Bowl. Not so fast. Not from me. No, 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 no. As a, t as a fan of this team, and has gone through so many heart attacks this year. Honestly, because of how how this team has been playing, they've kept it close. They really have been keeping it close with teams that they should be blowing out. You know, if they're gonna blow out somebody, they're gonna they have to blow them out. You can't you can't let you know competition both up and down stay close. If you want to be the top team in the league, you gotta blow out your competition. You want to be the top team in the league, but then then Sunday tonight. Or rather, this afternoon, I mean, you'll be watching this on a Monday, so, you know, uh, this doesn't matter. But Sunday, Sunday afternoon, the Pirates of Massachusetts went up 
at home. They woke up, drove over to the DCU Center in Worcester, and said, Arizona, catch these hands. You're getting your rabbit whipped. And the Arizona Rattlers got whipped. Defense was looking putrid out there. Putrid. That's the first time I've seen, this, is, this is the first time in a long time I've seen the Arizona Rattlers get their asses whipped. First time in a long time. I think I, I don't think I've seen this in a while because remember, 2019 they went undefeated until the United Bowl. But this this game right here. You know, they had a game similar to this against Sioux Falls, but it was I don't think it was as bad. But this was a beating. The Pirates are showing that they can compete. I am very surprised. I am very, very surprised. You know, the Pirates have been pretty good all season, but you know, this really says a lot. Could the Pirates potentially go to the United Bowl? What about Spokane? Because they, they've been doing some good stuff too. You know, they, of course, they had to play the, uh, they had to play Tucson you know, on Saturday night, which really doesn't say a lot. But they, but Spokane's beaten some teams too. Now, now I've heard people say, oh well, could be an interesting Arizona, Spokane, Frisco, Massachusetts, you know, top four. I think it's gonna. I think I think I'm, I'm sharing those same sentiments with those people. It's gonna be a very interesting top four. What about the other teams? What about Bismarck? What about Green Bay? What about Sioux Falls? What about Iowa? It's kind of a weird year for those other three. Not 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 Bismarck. I'm talking about Green Bay, Iowa, and Sioux Falls. It's those three teams are the other are the other three backbones of this league right now. Because the other nine, the other nine team, the other I'm fine to say nine. I'm at seven. The other seven teams are unproven right now. Yes, some of these are established names like Spokane, but you know Frisco, unproven. Duke City, unproven. Naz, unproven. Tucson, are still kind of new. Bismarck, still kind of new. They're in the same boat with Tucson. But, but, but Iowa? Struggling? Sioux Falls? Struggling? Green Bay? Green Bay can, you know, Green Bay usually has, you know, they're at the same, you know, they're at the same level they usually are. But, these three, but these three teams specifically, the other backbones of this league that has saved that saved this league from collapse in 2018, struggling like this, kind of bizarre. And don't even get me started on the Sioux Falls Green Bay game today because that game was ugly, very ugly game. I haven't seen a game like that in a while. You know, I remember way back in the day when the Philadelphia Soul took on the Dallas Desperados, and I clearly remember that 35-31 game very well. I think it was from like 2008 or something like that. I think the Desperados won that game. I, I might have to go check that. Um, my Dallas Desperado days. Those were the best. Those were some good old days. But no time for nostalgia. What's not nostalgic is Oakland. The Panthers of Oakland. Yeah, the last thing that I'll talk about here is the Panthers of Oakland. Oakland Panthers. Same Oakland Panthers owned by Marshawn Lynch and Roy Joy. Those Oakland Panthers. They are moving. Where are they moving? To San Jose. You know who else had a team, you know, named after a big cat? After a cat, you know, like being in San Jose? The Sabercats. You know who had a rivalry with the Sabercats? The Arizona Rattlers. So, hint, hint. Could it be? Could it be? But in all honesty, Moving out of Oakland, you know, once again, Oakland looking like it's a dead sports town. You got, you got the A's from MLB, you know, moving out, you know, probably moving out to Vegas, which I mean, I don't really mind, you know, because Vegas has gotten big. I'm very surprised how much sports Vegas has gotten. We, we, we covered it on this channel. We covered it on this channel. Indoor football, hockey, WNBA. NFL. They got it all. They're getting it all. Lacrosse. They're getting it all. But Oakland? They lost the Warriors. They lost the Raiders. They might lose the A's. What else is left in Oakland? Oakland's going to have to fix itself. So. And, and, you know, that does mean that Oakland who will be returning. That obviously means Oakland will be returning. 
So what about the other two teams that Roy Joy owns that we've been talking about for months now? What about Cedar Rapids? What about San Diego? And keep in mind, there's also a AWFC team going up to San Diego. What, what, what in the world's going on there? What's going on there? I don't know. I really don't know. This has actually been a lot longer than I thought. You know, a lot longer video than I thought it would be. I'm going to have to cut this up into some sections. <laughs> um, I think there was one more thing I wanted to say here. And I believe it was about... You know, expansion again because we're in, we're getting close to that period. Typically, around this time, the IFL season would be over. Typically, around this time, the NAL season, well, it's about to come out to a close. You know, the NAL season actually doing its you know doing its usual thing, coming to a close in August. You know, but the IFL's sticking it all the way out till September. That was the one thing I forgot. Yeah, that was the one thing. Finally, Todd Tyron has confirmed that it will be an 18 playoff. Finally. That's what I forgot to say. It shouldn't have taken this long, though. It shouldn't have been an email. It should have been a press release. Where was the press release, Todd? Where was the press release? The IFL has been so behind on stuff like this this year. Has the transactions page been not updated yet? Has it not been updated yet? I don't, I don't know. I haven't even looked at the IFL site like that. I've been trying to, you know, get the schedule worked out because the schedule's been messed up and altered because of Louisville, which I believe has still been listed on the IFL site as recently as last week. They were still listed on there. When I looked at the teams and stuff, I was trying to look at what the schedule was looking like, and they were still listed there. Why is Louisville still on there? At one point on the site, they, Louisville might still be on that site. I don't know anymore. Oh, no, this is one of the longest indoor this week in indoor football videos I've done. This is probably the longest one. But again, congrats to all the champions. Um, congrats to the teams that have clinched playoff spots. And for the IFL, some of those teams that I mentioned, you know, the top four that I mentioned right now, they probably already have a playoff spot locked up. I mean, there's just no point talking about that anymore. Frisco probably has a spot. Mass has a spot. Um, Spokane has a spot and Arizona has a spot, but it's the other four teams that need to get a spot right now. And of course, you know, maybe Duke City is lurking, you know, not Tucson and not Naz. They're not lurking. Duke City is lurking. So the other four teams at the at the um, bottom, at the bottom four of the top eight, which doesn't really make any sense as a sentence, you know, Duke City is lurking. So whoever's in that seven, eight, nine position, they're, they're they gotta be you know feeling it. Um, but yeah, I think that will do it. Um, we do have one more video coming out this week, and that will be talking about the NBA finals because this week the NBA finals will conclude. We don't know which day it will be. It will either be Tuesday or Thursday. That the NBA Finals will end, I will come right at you right after the conclusion of either Game 6 or Game 7 that the NBA Finals will conclude. Um, it's been an interesting series there so far. So, with all that being said, everybody, I hope y'all have a good week. You know, Hopefully there will be another video down the line. Um, I do have something planned for next week. Do have something planned for you all next week, and it's going to be covering something new, something new to this channel. And I know, I don't know, somebody, somebody, some people have already been like, "Hmm, this is interesting. You should try watching this." And I am, I am inclined to agree because of a very specific reason. So that will be a video next week. Of course, there will be a, a this weekend indoor football next week, and yeah, that's about it. That's about it for next week. Of course, maybe a channel update. Of course, I believe I'll, I'll put that on there as well. You know, a channel update. That'll be for next. That'll be for next uh, week after next, probably. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. So that's gonna do it, everybody. Y'all take care. Have a good day. Have a good week. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Click the notification bell. Do all that good stuff. Share. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same stuff I usually say. See y'all in the next video.